Hey everyone, it's Katina back from Soul Harvest Church. I am so glad to be with you today. Now, we have just come off of Easter, right? And, you know, it was a different Easter than it had been, but we still celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and um, Savior. So, Easter is all about what Jesus has done for us. See, he was willing to do whatever it took for us. And how amazing is it to think that we have a God that is willing to do whatever it, it takes for us. But just like he was required to do certain things, die on the cross, you know, be ridiculed and shamed, just like he was required to do that for us, we're required to do things for him. And the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2.16. Now I'm going to stop there. Because if you have your Bible, I want you to open it on your phone, you know, a physical Bible, whatever the case may be. I want you to get your Bible out and I want you to look at this verse. So we're going to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16. And it says, live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, but living as servants of God. Now, you might be thinking, Wow, what does this have to do with anything? You're crazy, which, yeah, I'm a little crazy. But this is what this means, okay? We're all free. We've all been given free will. We've been given the decision to make, or the ability, sorry, to make any decision that we want to make. And this is the truth of it. Our God is a gentleman. He will never force us to do something that we don't want to do. And he is so amazing that he gave us free will, even though he knew that we were going to use that free will to go against his great plan. Now, if you can think about this for a minute, you probably don't have a lot of choice in the things that you do right now. You know, your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, whoever you live with cooks dinner and they say, hey, come to the, come to the dinner table and eat, right? So you don't have a lot of choice in that. But our God gives you choice to do anything that you want, right? You can do anything that you want. But with that free will, he also gives us directions. So we have the choice to do what we want, but he shows us what we should be doing. And that is exactly what that verse means, right? It said not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil. What's evil? Disobeying your mother and father. You know, doing things that you know you're not supposed to do. Evil doesn't have to mean killing somebody or um, stealing something. You know, evil, the Bible tells us that, you know, um, even if you have a bad thought, that's a sin. Sin is evil, right? It says, but living as servants of God. So even though he gave us this free will, he gives us directions. He tells us what to do. And this right here, this is where you get your direction. This is where you learn what God wants you to do, right? Now I can stand up here and I can, I can bring you a good word. You can go to your parents or your grandparents or someone godly in your life, and they can bring you a good word. You can go to your pastor, like Pastor Matt, and he can bring you a good word. But we are all human, and sometimes we err. You know, it is up to you to get into this word. It is up to you. It doesn't matter that you're young. It doesn't matter if, you know, you were old. It is your responsibility. Your faith is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to know the commandments of Christ. Because right now, you are old enough to take a direct role in your faith. You are old enough to be accountable for what you do and do not do for the, for the kingdom, right? You are old enough to read your Bible. And if there's words in there you don't understand, look them up. Or listen to your Bible, you know. You have the ability and you need to know what the Word of God says. You know, 
Now, this is a crazy time that we're in, right? This, this time has just, it, it's unusual for all of us, but it has given us a great opportunity. We have an opportunity here to spend time with our Lord and Savior. You know, you're not waking up at six o'clock every day to do school, to go to school, to walk down halls, you know, things are so different. Maybe you get to sleep in a little bit, you know? So when you wake up, instead of, you know, picking up your phone to scroll, you know, social media or picking up your game controller, maybe you take five minutes to pray. Maybe you take five minutes to read one verse out of your Bible, right? And I want to leave, I, I, want, I want to give you a challenge, okay? And I just said that you need to know what the Bible tells you. You need to know what is important in the Word of God, right? So I challenge you to get into this book. This is not a fiction book. This is a, the, it, this is a book that is the inspired Word of God. And if you want to know where to start, I'm getting ready to send you out a prayer paper, okay? Look up some of those verses. If, um, if, you, if you have a phone or the internet or uh, a computer, go into Google and type in, what are the commandments of God? And it's going to show you. And then study them out. Don't stop there, right? Don't look at a verse on a screen and then say, oh, that's a nice verse. Get in here and look at that verse. And I was just talking to our tech guy, Scott, and we were talking about, you know, you have to know the context of what it says. You can't take one verse and, and run with it. You have to get in and you have to read the verse before, you have to read the verse after, you have to read the book before and the book after to know what God wants you to know. That is so important. And you have all of this time right now that you can do that. And you know, it, it is so funny to me that we are here. Pastor Matt was talking to talking in one of his prayers about such a time as this. We are here for such a time as this, right? And it is up to us to show the world how to act. And that leads me to this month, what we've been talking about. And we've been talking about humility. And if any of you remember what humility is, I want you to just say it out loud. Say what humility is. So I'll give you just a second to do that, if you can remember. All right, now I'm going to read to you what humility is. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Now, Jesus knew what he deserved, right? We've been talking all, all month that I've been with you so far. We've been talking about Jesus, right? He deserved to be in heaven. He deserved to be clothed in royal robes. He deserved to be praised and worshipped and loved. But the sad thing is, is that's not what he got. He gave up every single thing that he deserved so that you and I could have what we don't deserve. Grace, right? And that grace is so important. It's important to you. It's important to me. And the thing about that grace is that we can give grace to others in the form of forgiveness. Now, Colossians 3.13, Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone else, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Now, I challenged you in the last few times that I've been on to do something, right? I challenged you to pray. And I challenged you not only to pray, but to pray for someone that maybe you don't like. Pray for someone that, you know, maybe they've hurt you. Maybe they've said something bad. Maybe they have physically hurt you. I have challenged you to pray for that person, right? Now I have a question. How did it go? Did you do it? Did you pray for somebody else? Did you pray for somebody you didn't like? Because, you know, as humans, it's great to watch a video, and it's great to hear the Word of God. But if we don't do anything with it, we get nothing out of it. You know, I can stand up here all day and I can tell you what God has told me to tell you, but if you don't do anything with that, 
then nothing in your life is going to change. And you know, the funny thing is about praying for someone else, it does something for them, you know, it does, you know, it, you, you put them in front of God, right? And he can change their heart. But the thing is, is it doesn't only do something for, for them. It does something for you. It starts to soften your heart towards those people, right? And, and, and you know, it's possible that during this, this quarantine, you know, we're all sequestered inside. And if you don't know what sequestered is, right now I would stop and I would make you look it up. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you what it means. I'm going to tell you to look it up. You know, it's the teacher in me. I'm sorry. So we're all sequestered, right? So you might not see your prayers come to fruition right now. You might not see the results right this moment, right? Because you're praying for someone that you might not see until school starts back up or you might not see for a while. But God answers all prayers in his timing. And you know, um, when you pray for somebody, you show that, they, that you value them as a person, right? And it's so important to value others. And that leads us to our verse for this month. And it says, don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble and value others more than yourself. Philippians 2, 3. Now, this is the thing. It says value others more than yourself. In that challenge that I gave you, I challenged you to talk to these people, or not to talk to these people, sorry, to pray for these people. Maybe it is to talk to these people. Maybe I said that because you need to call them up and say, hey, I forgive you. Hey, I'm praying for you, right? We have that ability. But this is the thing. We are supposed to, we are commanded to, in this good book, we are commanded to value others more than ourselves. Now, it's time for you to get into the Word. It is time for you to know what God is telling you to do. And, you know, we have to know what the Word says for us to be able to live by that Word, right? We have to remember what Jesus requires of us because it's not all about us. I'm sorry to break the news to you, but life is not all about you. Right? And I love you guys to death. And you guys, I do not know why I'm so on fire today, but it's the truth. You know, I tell my kids this all the time. It's not all about you. It's about a family, about the family of God, right? And the Bible gives us direct commands. And I challenge you to look those commands up and to live by them because your life will be so much better and you will be so much happier. You know, when everything is going crazy, I am full of the joy of the Lord. I am. I am happy. I am not upset. You know, I am living in wisdom, but I'm, but I'm happy. You know, so we have to remember what Jesus requires of us. And in 1 Peter 2, 16, he's, he requires us to use our freedom to stay away from evil. In Colossians 3, 13, he requires us to use our, forget, our freedom to give forgiveness. In Philippians 2, 3, he requires us to use our freedom to be humble in James 4, 8, he requires us to use our freedom to draw near to him, right? The only way you're going to draw near to Jesus is by getting into your Bible, by praying, by seeking his face. You are at an age where you have the ability to learn on your own. You are at an age where you have, an, have the ability to grow so close to God during this time. So I have a question. How are you using your freedom in this lockdown? Are you using your freedom to glorify God? Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? Are you doing the things that you've been called to do? Are you calling up your friends? Are you texting them and checking on them, telling them, hey, I love you, I'm praying for you? Are you calling up that person that, you know, no one in school really likes and saying, hey, somebody's thinking about you? Because maybe they come from a home life where nobody's thinking about them. Maybe they're being beat. Maybe something horrible is going on there. And you might be the only person that checks on them. Maybe that's what God has called you to do. Or are you using this time to glorify yourself? 
Are you sleeping in late? Are you, you know, not praying as often as you should? Are you um, being hateful with your parents? Are you using this time just to play video games and to do whatever you want to do? How are you using your freedom? Because God is clear. We are to use our freedom to glorify Him, not for evil, right? And I'm not saying video games are evil. I'm not saying that taking time for yourself is evil. It's all in balance. You know, you're in an age, you should be having fun. You should be doing things. But when you're doing those, you should also be taking time for Jesus because that's what you're called to do because you are a believer. And if you're not a believer, then you need to listen. It is time for you to hit your knees and ask Jesus for his salvation. It is time for you to hit your knees and say, Father God, I believe that you are the son of Jesus. I believe that you died on a cross to save me for my sins. I believe that you rose in three days. I believe you were born of a virgin and that you were placed here by the, by the holy God to save me from my sins. Please come into my heart and show me the truth. Amen. That's what you need to pray. Now, I want, you, I want to challenge you to be the Christians you've been called to be. I don't know the answer to these questions. I don't want to know the answer to these questions. You know, I have to deal with my own answers. I want you to go to Jesus. And I want you to, I want you to look at yourself and figure out, what are you doing? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? And let him show you. So we're going to pray. And then I'm going to let you go. And I just want you guys to know that I love you and I will miss you. This is my last taping for a while. Um, just know that I love you and I miss you. And when you get your letter from me, it will have, um, it will have something on it where you can contact me. I don't know if I, I have to check with my, my boss and see, you know, if I need it to be an email or what. But if you have any prayer requests that you want me to pray for, if you have anything that you, that you want me to hold up to Jesus, then I want you to, I want you to send it to me and I'll link up in faith with you. Because that's what we're called to do right now. Link up in faith. So, dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you, Lord Jesus, and we praise you and we love you and we thank you. Father God, if there's anything in our hearts right now that are blocking us from, you know, filling the full presence of your glory and your grace and your mercy and your, um, just even, even your provision, Father God, I pray that you show that to us so that we can, we can, we can get that out of our system, Father God. I praise you and I thank you for these children, Father God, and for the people that are watching that aren't children. I know that some of this was directed towards kids, Father God, because that's, that's my audience, Father God. But this is a message that everyone can use, Lord Jesus. And I just pray, Father God, that you open their hearts to receive it. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you open these people's hearts just to know that you are the one true living God. I pray, Father God, that you protect us all. I pray Psalms 91 over, over the people watching this, over the families in our church, over the families that I know and I love, Father God, and over the world. I pray, Father God, that no plague shall come against our dwelling, Father God. And, and if it does, Father God, because we don't know, we don't know what is going to happen. If it does, Father God, Psalms 91 say that some may fall to our left and some may fall to our right, but none is going to harm us, Father God. That even if somebody gets sick, Father God, that by your stripes they are healed, Lord Jesus. Jesus, and that they, they are lifted up, Father God, and that they will, they will be made whole on this side of eternity, Father God. I praise you and I thank you for all the blessings that you've given to us, Lord. I pray that these children and these people watching, I pray that they just, they use their time wisely. They use it to draw near to you so that you can draw near to them, so that you can give them wisdom and favor, Father God. I pray, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you just bless us and you keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen.